19 classic chain restaurants in the USA. This is a list of places to eat in the United States of America that are classically American chains with a nationwide presence. If you're coming to the US and you want to experience a little bit of Americana or maybe a lot of Americana, these are some places you're going to want to eat. And these are a lot of the places that you won't find in the guidebooks. You're not going to find a lot on Yelp and places like that because they're not hot, they're not trendy, but they are classically American. Now, these change in this list, what's it mean to be classic? I looked at chains that were founded at least 30 years ago and also do not have a large international presence. So we are specifically not looking at worldwide chains like McDonald's, KFC, Burger King, Subway, Starbucks, Everybody's familiar with those. Everybody's eaten those. You don't need to eat them when you come to the U.S. We're also not talking about new chains like Shake Shack, Chipotle, or Blaze Pizza. I also won't be talking about regional chains like In-N-Out Burger, which is one of my favorites, but it's pretty regional to the West Coast. And so I'm actually going to have a whole separate video about classic chains in California that for my diehard In-N-Out Burger fans, In-N-Out Burger will be in there. By the way, this is a live stream. If you're on the live stream, let me know what you think. Let me know what your favorites are. Ask questions. One of the things I love most about these is I love the interaction. So let's go ahead and go on to the first classically American chain restaurant, and that is Cracker Barrel. Cracker Barrel, it's a classic middle of the country restaurant. Like if you are in the middle of the U.S. in one of these middle states, Cracker Barrel feels like a lot of restaurants there. Cracker Barrel was founded in 1969 in Lebanon, Tennessee, not Lebanon outside of the U.S., that's a city in Tennessee. Cracker Barrel now has 645 stores in 44 states. Cracker Barrel, it's a southern country theme, and all the stores look like this. They look like something southern country. They've all got like a front porch. They've all got rocking chairs on the porch. And when you first walk in the restaurant, the first thing you actually see is a store. It's called like Cracker Barrel Country Store. They've got a store that sells all sorts of country things like things that have roosters on them, uh, but we're talking about restaurants here, right? And so Cracker Barrel specializes in American comfort food and nostalgia. It's actually designed to be nostalgic. Its menu is full of cheap favorites like country fried steak and one of my favorites, chicken and dumplings. The portions are huge and it's cheap and it's good, which those often aren't three combinations that you get. And so Cracker Barrels can often be pretty busy and have weights that you wouldn't think for food like this because it's not trendy, it's not cool, but it's just down home great food. I feel particularly busiest at, um, at breakfast time. Uh, so uh, in the comments, since this is a live stream, there were a number of people who said no to the fact that I wasn't talking about In-N-Out Burger, but that's the next one. Fury 210 really likes Cracker Barrel, that they have the best French toast ever. And uh, Levi said, only ate there once. I hope you liked it. And uh, Kathy says, we have Cracker Barrel cheese here in Australia. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, and uh, Alex agrees that uh, Cracker Barrel is one of my favorites. So glad they have one here in Oregon, finally. And SoCal Seth comments that says, Cracker Barrel is meh. You know what, and you could actually say that about a few of the restaurants on this list, but it is classically American. So when you think of classic American chains, that's why I want you to have the lens on when you're listening to some of these. So number two, number two is Dickie's Barbecue Pit because barbecue is quintessentially American. Dickie's Barbecue Pit was founded in 1941 in Dallas, Texas, now with 560 locations across 43 states. As I mentioned, barbecue super American. And yes, the best barbecue is in Texas. And yes, if you were in Texas, you probably could find better barbecue than Dickie's. But if you're in all 43 states, chances are 
Dickie's might be the best barbecue in that place. And so if you are tooling around the U.S. and you don't know where to go for good barbecue, you can go to Dickie's because there's 560 locations. Uh, Dickie's Barbecue Pit, it's a fast, casual restaurant that specializes in barbecue. One of my favorites from Dickie's is the barbecue brisket. They do pulled pork. They do a bunch of different meats. You generally get like a meal, a sandwich, and a couple sides, barbecue beans, mac and cheese. One of the things I like best about Dickie's is their, let's see, how do I point to this? is their yellow cup, as you could imagine. And something that's kind of cool about Dickies is at Dickies, they always have free ice cream. They have this ice cream machine with ice cream cones, and the ice cream is totally free. If you eat there, you can get as much ice cream as you want to. What's also kind of neat is that in each of the restaurants, they actually smoke the meat with wood. They use hickory wood to smoke the meat. And so something that makes really good barbecue good barbecue is when it's smoked with actual wood, not liquid smoke, not some other things, not just slow fired. Uh, and some of their great home style sides include fried okra, jalapeno beans, green beans with bacon, waffle iron fries, and I mentioned that macaroni and cheese. Uh, in the comments, Levi agrees and says, Dickies, pretty darn good. Tanner agrees. Dickies is awesome. Tony agrees as well. Chin May uh, says that Dickies is too fancy for barbecue. One here in Ashburn went out of business. Yeah, you know, with any big chain, they are going to go out of business. Seth, where where was your Dickies? And I feel like uh, SoCal, but Phoenix, right? So I feel like with any franchise, these things. Some can be managed good, some cannot be managed that good. I've been into some Dickies that have been really great, I've been into others that aren't as great, but in general, I think they are pretty good. Micah says, uh, we just got one and it's always busy. Um, Kathy asks, is there one in Hawaii? I think, I don't know if it's open yet, but I actually did hear they are planning to open a Dickies on Oahu. Uh, and Tanner says, even in Dallas, Dickies is still pretty darn good. Yeah, it is pretty good. Uh, all right, so let's go on to number three. The third classic American chain restaurant is Popeyes because fried chicken is classically American. And you might say, well, Chris, Where's KFC? And as I said at the beginning, I'm not including worldwide chains. KFC, I think today, actually makes more money in China than they do in the US. KFC's really taking the dumps. But we're talking now about Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen. That's the full name of this restaurant. It was founded in 1972, originally called Chicken on the Run in New Orleans, Louisiana. Popeye's now has a lot of locations. They have 2,600 locations, classically American, now owned by a Canadian company. But Popeyes is the second largest quick service chicken restaurant group after Kentucky Fried Chicken. And uh, before it was named Popeyes Louisiana Kitchen, it was called Popeyes Chicken and Biscuits and also Popeyes Fried Chicken and Biscuits. Obviously with this whole health craze following around the US, you know, fried, things like that. They've taken away from that name. What's also interesting, if you look at the name, it's Popeye's and it, there's, no, there's no apostrophe, right? Like it should have an apostrophe, like McDonald's does and things like that. Uh, but uh, the founder claimed uh, that he was too poor to afford the apostrophe. So that's why there's no apostrophe in Popeye's. And uh, so I mentioned chicken. Popeye's is all about fried chicken. Uh, you can get your chicken either mild or spicy. They get sides like red beans and rice, Cajun fries, mashed potatoes, Cajun style gravy. Uh, and in addition to the fried chicken, they have other Louisiana specialties like a chicken and sausage jambalaya and po' boy sandwiches. But I will tell you, even though KFC is a bigger chain, I like Popeye's a lot better. And, you know, we talk about travel. When I go through Atlanta, Georgia, when I go through Atlanta Airport, I'm flying on Delta, there's a number of Popeye's in the airport, and that is one of my stops is at Popeye's. Uh, SoCal Seth says... Love me some Popeyes, Seth. All right, that's good. I'm glad I finally picked one that you agree with. Raider uh, answered about Dickies before I went on and said there was one. Uh, there is one on the way to Vegas and Barstow. Love stopping there when I come back home. Good tip. Uh... Tau Empire Kid likes Popeyes but says it's a little expensive. 
what do you like cheaper, Town Pyre Kid? KFC, do you think that's cheaper? Min says he loves the spicy crispy chicken. Kathy's kids love chicken. Um, Min says the Popeye's Cajun fries are great. Alonzo says Popeye's is always busy in Miami, Florida. And uh, Jose answered about the barbecue that says we need to visit Texas for good barbecue and Lockhart, Texas, visit Black's Barbecue. Texas has a lot of amazing barbecue, and I don't know how they do it so good. Um, but uh, Dickie's is pretty good for chain. Jim loves Popeye's. Uh, so does Chin Mei. And uh, SoCal Seth says, I was just in Atlanta. Did you eat at Popeye's, Seth, in Atlanta? All right, let's go on to the next Number number four, the fourth classic American chain is White Castle for burgers. Burgers, quintessential American food. You can't come to the U.S. without having some burgers. I already mentioned In-N-Out Burger is going to be in a different video because that'll be in the California Chains video. And by the way, if you wonder what I'm drinking, I am drinking uh, Ito N matcha green tea with ginger. That's what I'm drinking today. And uh, so White Castle was founded in 1921 in Wichita, Kansas, now with 385 locations. 1921. White Castle started nearly two decades before McDonald's came to be. Many people credit McDonald's with making fast food what it is in the U.S., but people that are actually in the know about fast food will tell you that White Castle was the birthplace of fast food in the U.S., White Castle's been made extra famous by the Herald and Kubar movies. They have an emphasis on um, cleanliness, gleaning uniforms, polished porcelain, stainless steel. And now let's talk about the burgers. They have these really tiny burgers. Their burgers are so tiny with these grilled onions on this small bun. Uh, and one of their mottos uh, was to buy them by the sack. Um, because they were so small. And also White Castle popularized this notion of the open kitchen and you could see what they do and what they make. Um, so uh, Chin Mei says, I never ate at White Castle, but I will be eating this year when I visit Vegas. There is indeed one on the Las Vegas Strip, which I think is where a lot of people eat it. I had it for the first time in the Midwest, like outside of Chicago. Um, Yippee said, Harold and Kumar like White Castle from the movie. Tony says, haven't seen a White Castle here in California. I have not either, Tony, but they are around a lot of the rest of the country. Um, Alonzo says... Uh, White Castle is awesome, and I love my EQ says, I'm from Wichita. Very cool. I love my EQ. Have you eaten at the original White Castle? I'm curious. Uh, SoCal Seth says, uh, they call them sliders for a reason. Yeah, and like sliders are becoming this whole trend that's coming through the burger scene in the U.S., right? Little burgers, you get like three or four of them. Yeah, White Castle or sliders. It's about like three or four bites max for that burger. Uh... S-P-V-R-D-X uh, says, not a fan of White Castle's beef at all. And so I am definitely not suggesting that White Castle makes a better burger than In-N-Out Burger. I like In-N-Out Burger, In Burger better, but I think you have to eat at White Castle so that you can say you've had it and a little bit of that Americana right there. And I will tell you, there are lots of people who go to Vegas and they make a pilgrimage to White Castle. But uh, Biaco says, I don't like White Castle. I only like In-N-Out Burger. Uh, you're a good man, Biaco, because I like In-N-Out Burger too. Min says, I had White Castle in Detroit. It was delicious. Uh, Timbo says, White Castle is high on my list. All right, so let's go on to number five. What's quintessentially American after hamburgers? Huh. Hot dogs at Wiener Schnitzel. Number five on this list is Wiener Schnitzel. It was founded in 1961 as Der Wiener Schnitzel in Wilmington, California. Wiener Schnitzel has 358 locations, and Wiener Schnitzel is the world's largest hot dog chain. Because how many hot dog chains do you know of? But they have 358 locations that specialize in hot dogs. Uh, Wiener Schnitzel locations um, have a lot of them in California and Texas, though they're also in Arizona, Colorado, Illinois, Louisiana, New Mexico, Nevada, Utah, and Washington. Outside of the domestic U.S., 
uh, they have one location in Guam and one location in Panama. What they're also famous for is they're famous for these A-frame buildings, this building that looks like the letter A that's always painted, this classic red and yellow. You could imagine I like yellow, and so Wiener Schnitzel's always like that. You can tell when Wiener Schnitzels have gone out of business, too, because there'll be like a taco shop or something that's in a very odd-looking building like that. I have to get used to pointing in this direction. Um, but uh, there are some other chains that are famous for these sorts of constructions. IHOP, Tasty Freeze, Whataburger. Um, but what's also interesting about Wiener Schnitzel is Wiener Schnitzel was founded by a former Taco Bell employee. Yes. The founder of Wiener Schnitzel used to work at Taco Bell. And they changed their name in 1977 from Der Wiener Schnitzel to just Wiener Schnitzel. And so I mentioned, what do they serve there? It's all about the hot dogs, hot dogs, ketchup dogs, mustard dogs, chili dogs, Polish dogs, everything that's got a dog in it somehow. They also do burgers. They also do fries, chili cheese fries. They like to show things with the chili. I don't love the chili so much. I just always get the ketchup dog, probably because I'm boring, uh, but it's pretty good. Unfortunately, Wiener Schnitzel, I think, A, with the health food craze, has been on the, the downtrend a little bit. And Tao Empire Kid says the Wiener Schnitzel quality went downhill in the South Bay area. Yeah, that's one of those, like, expand and this and that, but I think it's a classic. And a lot of the Wiener Schnitzels, too, like this, the seating's outside on these patio things. I I mean, that's a classic American restaurant. Alonzo says, never heard of that wiener place. We have none here in Miami. Well, hey, if you come to one of the states that I mentioned it's in, you should definitely check it out. Of course, another classic place to get hot dogs, and I'm not, I'm not including it on this list, but it's Costco. If you ever come to Costco in the U.S., go to the food court. Most, not most, many of the Costco food courts are actually outside Costco, so you can go there without a membership. You can get a hot dog and a soda at Costco for $1.50. That's amazing. Classically American. And if you had that same hot dog at like a baseball stadium or something like that, it would cost you $7, but $1.50 at Costco. All right. So, um, yeah, SoCal Seth commented and says, uh, Wiener Schnitzel from Taco Bell. That makes perfect sense. Absolutely. Um, Jose says, you need to try Whataburger and, uh, again, come to Texas. You know, Jose, I did try Whataburger in Texas. I didn't love it as much as In-N-Out. Uh, and Yippie says, do they actually sell Wiener Schnitzel? Schnitzel is not a hot dog. No, Yippie, they don't. Um... I think uh, they just thought it was German, and Germans eat a lot of hot dogs, schnitzel's pork, <coughs> but yes, hot dogs are not uh, schnitzel. All right, so let's go on to the next number. We are now at number six. Number six is pizza, and pizza at number six is Papa. John's. You know, there's a lot of pizza chains in the U.S., and this was one I spent a bit of time racking my brain on what pizza chain I should choose. Pizza Hut, Domino's, Little Caesars, those are the predominant three big chains in the U.S., but they're everywhere, too. Pizza Hut's everywhere, Domino's is everywhere, Little Caesars, I don't think is very good. If I'm getting delivery pizza, I really like Papa John's. Papa John's was founded in 1984 in Jeffersonville, Indiana. Papa John's now has 5,199 locations. They're starting international expansion, but they don't have a lot yet. Uh, so that's why I still kept it on this list. Unlike Pizza Hut, which does seem to have a presence in pretty much every international city. Papa John's primarily takes carryout and delivery orders, although some restaurants do have tables and chairs for dining in. Papa John's slogan is better ingredients, better pizza. And I really think that's a good slogan, and I really think their pizza is better than the other three that I mentioned, Pizza Hut, Domino's, Little Caesars. I feel like it just, it tastes healthier, it tastes better, it tastes fresher. So, um, let's see. Uh, Brandon asks, if I'm serious, but Pizza Hut is the best. Yeah, I don't know. I don't agree with you, Brandon. And this is another one where I think because Pizza Hut has become such a big franchise, I think the quality at Pizza Hut's 
is hit or miss, but I feel like Papa John's is pretty consistent. Uh, I do like the buffets at Pizza Hut. If you're eating a Pizza Hut in the U.S., you should definitely find a sit-down one that has the buffet, because that's classically American. Levi agrees. Papa John's is great. They also serve their pizza with a garlic sauce for dipping, which is pretty good. Um, and uh, Eduardo says... Love your channel. I was once an assistant manager at a pizza place, made $1 an hour. Eduardo, I hope that was a long time ago, because if it's recently, you're not getting paid enough. A couple more votes for the garlic sauce. Alonzo votes for the garlic sauce. <clears throat> Timbo Slice says he could live off that garlic sauce. Chin May says, I like Papa John's because I'm a big Peyton Manning fan. Kathy likes the pizza. 2000 MCR says, what about Godfather's Pizza? Yeah, Godfather's, it's another classic American chain, but I feel like they're another one that's gone downhill, though many of them do have pizza buffets. Um, Nathan says, eh, Papa John's is the best. Eric97 says, what about Round Table? I don't love Round Table Pizza. I know they're in a lot of like college campuses. Uh, Eduardo asks... If I've ever tried Shakey's Pizza, I have. And Shakey's, and a lot of these pizza parlors, Shakey's, um, Round Table, Godfather's, they're like these pizza places that have these, like, tables that you could seat, like, 20 people that are, like, really good for, like, kids' birthday parties. They're really good if you have a huge party that you want to get to dinner. But I don't think they're all that great. Um... And uh, Mike Dunn says, it's either Domino's or Costco that I highly favor for pizza quality and not just quantity at buffet places. Yeah, I mentioned Costco before. If you're at Costco, you can get a really good slice of pizza there for $1.99. Costco is a classic American chain and their food court. You should try it. All right, let's go on to the next number. This is number seven, the seventh classic American chain is the old spaghetti factory because what logically flows from pizza is spaghetti. Nothing's more American than spaghetti. The old spaghetti factory was founded in 1969 in Portland, Oregon with 43 locations. And most of the old spaghetti factory locations are in historic renovated warehouses, old buildings, um, they traditionally feature like antiques and chandeliers, brass headboards, but the most prominent feature of every old spaghetti factory location is the uh, old classic tram or trolley car. They have one of these in every one of their restaurants and you can actually dine inside the trolley car. Uh, what makes Old Spaghetti Factory, I think, really good for food, it's inexpensive, it's known for full service meals, bread, soup, salad, pasta, and ice cream, Spumoni ice cream, which is um, pistachio, chocolate, and strawberry together. All those things come with a meal. So you order spaghetti and meatballs, it's coming with soup and salad, bread, and the ice cream as kind of a package deal. Um, I really like the spaghetti and meatballs. Uh, and OC Girl, she really likes the spaghetti with the mazithra cheese and brown butter. An interesting part of the old spaghetti factory is it was founded by a gentleman from of Greek descent. Uh, and because he has Greek descent, he started selling this dish, dish with mazithra cheese, which is a Greek cheese. And if you've never had spaghetti with mazithra cheese, I would encourage you to get that at the old spaghetti factory. Probably one of those things that if you lived with a Greek mother, she'd make it for you at home, but you're not going to find a lot of other restaurants that are serving brown butter and mazithra cheese. Alex agrees with me and says that that is his favorite. Um, Alonzo says, never heard of it. Yeah, obviously with 43 locations, it's not as big as some of the others. Uh, Michelle says, where are they located? Um, in 43 different places. In cities, but they'll typically just have like one in each city. San Diego, Newport Beach, uh, Portland, Seattle. I've been to one in St. Louis. So they are, there's like a Hawaii. They're all across the country, but you sort of, you sort of have to look for them because they're not going to like run into you the same way that Papa John's will. Um, Derek says there's no trolley car in Oregon. That's lame, Derek. Um, 
Let's see. Uh, Kevin uh, says he found a worm in his salad. That's a bummer. Um, uh, Electric Rick, who's my dad, if those of you don't know, says he loves the old spaghetti factory. So many wonderful memories. And uh, yes, my parents used to take me a lot as a kid because it was cheap and there's a lot of food there. Uh, Kathy says, my son is fussy but loves spaghetti. Um... And uh, the Uniplex says, I've gone to the ones in Banff and in Gastown, Vancouver, and no trolley. You know, all the ones I've been to have a trolley, but all of you have the data point that they don't. So interesting data point, and that's lame that they don't have trolleys. Uh, Fenn says, we have two in St. Louis. The other one is more in Chesterfield. Yeah, I ate at the one in St. Louis that's like right by the arch. Uh, and the Uniplex says, uh, one in Victoria and one in Vancouver and Banff. On Facebook, Melanie says uh, she's excited to be getting an In-N-Out burger in our area near Salem, Oregon. And that they have a spaghetti factory <coughs> in Salem, Oregon. And I'm glad to get a data point from Alex Jossie that says there's one in the southeast, or southeast Portland metro area that has the trolley car. So I'm glad I got at least a couple votes on that. I'm not a complete and total liar. All right, let's go on to number eight. The eighth. Best classic American chain in the USA is Olive Garden. So we went from pizza to spaghetti to Italian. Olive Garden was founded in 1982 in Orlando, Florida. Olive Garden has 892 locations. Olive Garden's claim to fame is it is the largest chain of Italian-themed restaurants in the United States. Olive Garden's a casual dining restaurant specializing in... Italian American cuisine. They are most known for their unlimited soup, salad, breadsticks, and pasta. That's what you see on this picture here. <coughs> pasta, breadsticks, salad, no soup, but many of your pastas that you would order at Olive Garden, you get everything you could get. And uh, <coughs> so, um, the Derek says, I'm done. Derek, are you done? Because I mentioned Olive Garden? I'm curious. I think some people have a love-hate relationship with Olive Garden, but let me get through this before you leave. Uh, so, uh, I think the other thing that's really good about Olive Garden, and I'm not claiming that they have the world's best Italian food. Their lasagna is not the world's best lasagna. Their pasta is not the best pasta. I do love their soups. I think their soups are really good. They make all of their soups and sauces in-house. When I go to Olive Garden, I generally get the unlimited soup, salad, and breadsticks deal. I don't even get the pasta because I can just get full entirely off the soup, and I think it's pretty good. Uh, and uh, OC Girl loves the Zuppa Toscana. We, uh, we switch back and forth between the soups. You know, when we go there for lunch, we'll get like four bowls of soup or something. Uh, so Tony says Olive Garden is too expensive. Um, I think, you know, maybe if you get the full entrees, but if you're just getting the soup and salad, it's actually not that expensive. It's pretty cheap. And by the way, the unlimited soup, salad, and breadsticks is actually not on the menu, but they serve it at every Olive Garden. Uh, Chin Mei says some people think it's too commercial. I don't disagree, but it's consistent. And I would agree. And, uh... Jeff says, I went to the one in Palmdale many years ago and got sick. I'm sorry to hear that, Jeff. What did you eat there? Was it just the soup and salad, or did you eat something else? Oh. An OC girl points out that uh, we've got friends and cousins from Hawaii. They specifically ask for Olive Garden when they come to the mainland. Um... And uh, Eduardo says it was his lucky day. He found an Olive Garden gift card in a box. His garage had $15 on the card. Uh, all right, so let's go on to number nine. The ninth best classic American chain is Krispy Kreme for donuts. We've made it through main courses, entrees, burgers, pizza, donuts. Donuts are American, and Krispy Kreme was founded... 1937, 1937, in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Krispy Kreme has 1,005 locations. Krispy Kremes are typically, in the U.S., have a drive through The donuts almost are always made in that store, <clears throat> and you can see them being made. One of the reasons why I included Krispy Kreme 
although they do have some international locations, not all of their international locations make them in store, and they don't all have the hot light, and they're not open 24 hours with a drive through Those are some of the things that make this classically American. And they have this machine, and if you, there's an episode of The Simpsons where Homer Simpson goes to Krispy Kreme, and he sees this machine. And if you look at this machine, and I, I can't put my finger over the video, but uh, where those... Um, where those donuts pass under that steel thing, there's a sheet of liquid sugar that goes over those donuts. And when you go to Krispy Kreme, you should go when they have the hot light on. They will have this neon sign in the window that says, hot now, in red neon letters. That's when you want to go to Krispy Kreme because that's when the donuts are fresh. They're right off that thing. Some Krispy Kremes used to give you a free donut just for coming in. Uh, I'm not sure that they all do, but it is all about the hot donuts from Krispy Kreme. Um, Kevin King says, I went into a sugar coma just looking at that. Brandon says, I love Krispy Kreme. Um, Kathy says, we have that in Melbourne, Melbourne, Australia too. Jim uh, likes the pumpkin spice donuts. Yeah, they have a lot of different flavors. The only ones that are like hot now are the glazed donuts. Um, SoCal Seth says Krispy Kreme's good from that hot oil. It is. Jeff says wait for the red light for the fresh ones. I agree. Alonzo says they have the best donuts. They do. Brian says I think they have too much icing for my liking. You know, if they're hot, it doesn't seem like there's so much icing because it's all liquidy. I agree if they're cold, then they're not as good. So if you get them cold, put them in the microwave for eight seconds, and then they're hot. I mean, not as good as when they're fresh. Um, Trisha says, I love Stan's Donuts. Is that a train chain, Trisha? Nathan says, I live down the road from Krispy Kreme. Um, Eric asks if I've ever heard of Lamar's Donuts for Custard Phil's Donuts. I have not heard of Lamar's Donuts. Where is Lamar's Donuts? Uh, Tanner remembers that Simpsons episode. That's amazing. It <clears throat> reminds me of Homer Simpson. Yeah, because, I mean, he, Homer Simpson loves donuts. He also loves that liquid icing. Ugh, just to send it down his throat. Uh, Alex says, hot, fresh Krispy Kreme. Impossible to beat. They are. Uh, Peace and Rice 64 says, they shut down in Canada years ago. You know what's funny? They had this, like, big expansion, like, 15 years ago. They opened a bunch of San Diego locations, and then they closed most of them. I think that... They just like oversaturated the market, but um, there's one that OC Girl and I go to in uh, like near Disneyland a lot, and you go to that one, and the drive through will have like 20 cars waiting in the drive through. You go in line, there'll be 30 people waiting in line for donuts. Like Krispy Kreme has become like a Friday night place to like where the cool kids hang out or something. I mean, it's really interesting that a donut place is where the cool kids hang out, but it is. <laughs> Chin Mei said, the first time I ever had Krispy Kreme was at Excalibur's food court in Las Vegas at 4 in the morning. That is the best time to go to Krispy Kreme. Will asks, if I've done Taco Bell yet. Will, I, I decided not to put Taco Bell on this list because um, they have international locations. I could have, but it's not. Um, so, so there. There is uh, the story about Taco Bell. All right, we will go on to number 10. Speaking of dessert, number 10 is the Cheesecake Factory. And you might think the Cheesecake Factory is dessert, but it's not. The Cheesecake Factory was founded in 1971 as a bakery in Los Angeles, but as a restaurant in 1978 in Beverly Hills to sell their cheesecakes, plus a whole bunch of classic American entrees. Cheesecake Factory has 210 locations. They are known for having a huge, eclectic menu, large portions. And did I mention cheesecakes? They have a lot of signature cheesecakes, and their cheesecakes are amazing. They are really good. Um, what I really like about Cheesecake Factory is the stuff that people complained about Olive Garden, 
not being consistent. Cheesecake Factory is really consistent. Really consistent food quality, good burgers, steaks, pizzas, pastas, um, Cajun food, Italian food, Asian food. One of my favorites at the Cheesecake Factory is the Cajun Jambalaya Pasta. I also really like their gumbo. Those are like the Cajun Southern variety. In the Asian variety, they have this thing called Bang Bang Chicken and Shrimp. It's kind of like a Thai-inspired dish. Uh, Italian-inspired, they've got the shrimp scampi. And I have yet to have any of the cheesecakes that I didn't like. My favorite cheesecake is their mango cheesecake or their key lime cheesecake. I think they're both pretty good. Uh, OC Girl said... <clears throat> Just had Cheesecake Factory last night and ate the leftovers for dinner. Jeff Webb, uh, Mr. Negativity, says that oh, Cheesecake Factory is rated the most unhealthy chain. Yeah, you know, and they get those ratings because of the portion size and the calorie count. But you can be like OC Girl and just eat it in two sittings, right? Just because they put it in front of you doesn't mean you have to eat it all. Will Cutlass says, and a lot of calories. I look at it to say that a lot of calories means I'm getting my money's worth on that food. More calories for my dollar. Um, I think I answered Michelle what I order from the Cheesecake Factory. My favorite's the Cajun Jambalaya Pasta. Um, Trisha loves their uh, Key Lime Cheesecake. SB Coach asks if I like In-N-Out Burger. I love In-N-Out Burger. If I had to pick a single favorite restaurant, it's In-N-Out Burger. But it's not on this list because it's not a national chain. It's going to be in my California chain video, which will be coming out in a future live stream. Um, Jim S. says, <clears throat> Cheesecake Waikiki is a great spot. I assume you mean the Cheesecake Factory in Waikiki. They have one there. Colson says, I watched your video about Washington, D.C. Earned a sub. Keep up the great content. Thank you, Colson. I appreciate it. Um, Levi says, went to Cheesecake Factory in San Diego for dinner. Took forever, and the restaurant was empty. Yeah, they, they have this interesting service model, which is slow, but I think their theory is... You go to Cheesecake Factory because you're there and you want to talk and so they don't want to rush you. It is possible to get out of Cheesecake Factory quickly. And if you're like me and you know what you want, then you just say when they see you, I know what I want to order and you order right away. If you ever tell the waiter, can I have more time to look at the menu? They usually go away for like 10 or 15 minutes. And the reason why... For those of you who've never been to the Cheesecake Factory, their menu is like 40 pages. I kid you not. It is the most massive menu of any restaurant I've ever been to. If you've been to Chinese restaurants and think they have ridiculous menus, the Cheesecake Factory has an even crazier menu. And by the way, the Cheesecake Factory, if you're in Las Vegas or in a couple other places like Texas, their sister chain is called the Grand Lux Cafe. It's also uh, essentially owned by Cheesecake Factory. Uh, Jenny Fed says, uh, love the Bellagio dish at the Cheesecake Factory and the mango cheesecake. SB Coach asks, how expensive are their cheesecakes? It's like $7 a slice. Uh, and they're big slices. Like, the slice can feed two people. Brandon asks if I'm going to cover Joe's Crab Shack. It is not on the list. Will asks if I like Shake Shack. I do. It would be in a different list. It would be in a list of, uh, like, new American chains that are really good, but it's not classic. It's not over 30 years old, so it's not on this list. All right, let's go on to number 11. The 11th best classic chain restaurant in the USA <clears throat> for breakfast is IHOP, the International House of Pancakes. The International House of Pancakes was founded in 1958 in Burbank, California. IHOP has 1,650 locations, often with a blue roof, and often in an A-frame building like we saw with Wiener Schnitzel before. They focus on breakfast, serving pancakes, waffles, French toast, and omelets. My favorite at IHOP is the Rudy Tootie Fresh and Fruity. IHOP also serves a menu of lunch and dinner items that include sandwiches, burgers, and salads. And actually, last year, to publicize the fact that they're more than just pancakes. They did this publicity stunt where they said they were changing their name from IHOP. They were changing their name from IHOP to IHOB with a B to say they were the International House of Burgers. They got a lot of press 
I'm not sure that that worked for them all that well because I've yet to um, I've yet to go there for a burger. They're still primarily oriented to breakfast food, and one of the things they say is they welcome breakfastarians, breakfastarians with open arms. Uh, and IHOP is also the originator of the U.S.'s National Pancake Day, where the chain gives out free pancakes and encourages donations to charity. So if you go to IHOP and you're there at lunch or dinner or 3 a.m., I recommend you get the breakfast because I think that's what's good there. Uh, <coughs> Mice Elf says IHOP is meh, similar to Denny's. But Mice Elf, you have to agree, IHOP is classically American. Um, Kevin King says, Rudy Tootie, fresh and fruity. Sure is. Um, Drew says, uh, his dogs love the patty melt from IHOP. All right, that's good. Um, Levi, uh, Jim S says, Chick-fil-A, make the list. You know what? It probably should have, but it didn't. Uh, and I don't have time to write it in the next 20 minutes, but that is a great suggestion, Jim. Only if I talk to you before I made this list. Uh, Eduardo asked, was Bob Evans in contention? I put in one diner and one breakfast place, so we'll go to the next diner in the middle. I looked at Bob Evans, but I ultimately didn't add it. It could be. So could Bob's Big Boy. There's a number of these-esque kind of places. Um... And Ricky said, <clears throat> I thought IHOB was the International House of Breakfast. It was the International House of Burgers because they wanted to publicize the fact that they're more than pancakes because they don't get a lot of business for lunch and dinner. And I wonder why. Shannon says, uh, speaking of burgers, Teddy's Bigger Burgers are really good as well. God bless. Shannon, I agree. In Hawaii, Teddy's Bigger Burgers is pretty good. I love the burgers from Teddy's because I like the... Um, Pineapple, peanut butter. Pineapple and peanut butter on my burger at Teddy's, which is pretty good. Uh, Gravel says, the only time I went to Chick-fil-A is on a Sunday, which, by the, by the way, if those of you here are not familiar with Chick-fil-A, it is a very religious chain, and so they are actually closed on Sundays as a matter of their religious preference. So if you ever go to Chick-fil-A on a Sunday, you'll be pretty sad. So we're going to go to number 12, the 12th best American chain. This one's a classic. Classic. The Waffle House. The Waffle House was founded in 1955. Waffle House has 1,881 locations, and they all look the same. They all kind of look like that. From the uniforms to the seating experience, Waffle House is a classic down-home dining environment, which does not mean fancy and does not mean nice. <clears throat> Uh, and, uh, sometimes people call Waffle House Waho, uh, and if you're in the South, they seem to be on almost every block. Waffle House is a 24-hour, 24-hour oasis for pancakes, fluffy pecan waffles, and hash browns. Breakfast reigns supreme here, uh, and you can get your breakfast all day at the Waffle House. Um... Jeff Webb says Waffle House is definitely an Atlanta classic. Uh, Melissa says, I need to get there. It's on my bucket list. Tanner says, looks like something you would see from 1955. It truly does. There are some of their breakfast items in the classic table. That waffle looks like a waffle you'd have in 1955. I'm not telling you it's the world's best waffle. It's a classic waffle, though. If you're here in L.A. and you're here in California, it'll be in my California chain. Then you have to visit... Roscoe's House of Chicken and Waffles. Fried chicken and waffle. That's what I tell you. That's a great, that's a great combination. Uh, Jenny Fed says, the awful waffle. Waffle House is so good. Um, Jim S. says he had glass in his eggs. Only at the Waffle House. I'm glad I've never had glass in my eggs. Uh, <clears throat> at Costco, I had glass in my pizza once. And I think it was from the... Um, the container that they keep the marinara sauce in, like it broke when they opened it, and there was glass. Shannon Radford asks if Zaxby's made the list. Uh, Zaxby's is not on the list. Never eaten a Zaxby's. Uh, or maybe I have. I don't know. Shannon, why do you like Zaxby's? I'm curious. Jenny Fed's from Atlanta originally, so yeah, I bet you've seen a lot of Waffle Houses there. Uh, and Jenny likes the Cracker Barrel. That's good. Eric thinks I'm funny. All right. Thanks, Eric. Trisha loves the Waffle House. 
Um, Drew says, Waffle House was started by a Georgia Tech nerd. That's why the colors are black and gold. Oh, that's really interesting. I didn't know that. That's cool. Tanner Wilson says, you can't have chicken and waffles all the time, but man, it's a great combination. I agree. The fried chicken, the saltiness of it, add some maple syrup. Mm-mm. Brandon loves himself some fried chicken and waffles. SB Coach asked if Cracker Barrel's on the list. It was. It was number one. If you tuned in at the beginning, you would have seen it. Goddess says, why don't you talk about Shake Shack? I don't talk about Shake Shack in this video because this is about classic American chains that were founded in the 1980s or earlier. So they got to be at least 80 years old to be classic. Shake Shack's good, but it's not classic. Um, Jenny Fed says uh, her cousin owns some Zaxby's in Columbia, South Carolina. Colson asked what I'm drinking. Yeah, and this one I'm drinking hot tea. It's a uh, Ito N matcha green tea with ginger. As I'm drinking, and I'm about out of this tea, so <clears throat> I don't have any more hot tea. I need to move to iced tea. All right. So let's go on to number thirteen. Drum roll, please. Number thirteen, Denny's. Denny's. It's a classic. It had to be on this list. Denny's for an all-American diner. Denny's was founded in 1953 in Lakewood, California, originally as a donut store. It was called Danny's with an A, Danny's, and they sold donuts. But now they have 1,700 locations and they don't sell donuts. If you want the real American diner experience, Denny's is everywhere. By 1981, Denny's had over 1,000 locations in all 50 U.S. states. Denny's is normally found near freeway exits. It's open 24-7 unless they're in some location where they have to close by law. Some of the Denny's have updated their name to say Denny's Diner. And um, I think they're doing that to capitalize on the people that say, come to the U.S. and eat at a diner. Um, and I'll tell you, much like I said for IHOP, the reason to go there is for the breakfast. The reason to go to Denny's is for the breakfast. They're famous for what they call the Grand Slam breakfast. It's typically a combo of bacon, eggs, toast, and hash browns. Denny's is best at 3 in the morning, in the middle of a long drive, someplace you don't know where you are, but Denny's is open. You can get yourself some 3 a.m. pancakes. That's what Denny's is good for. If you go into Denny's and you expect anything else or you get anything else, you'll probably be disappointed. If you go to Denny's and you expect great food, you'll be disappointed. But you go to Denny's and you'll order your food and it'll be classically American. The place will be run down. The staff will be surly. It'll be slow. Your table will be sticky. You know, but that's what made an American diner. So just go in to Denny's with that. Uh, so, you know, all that, and there's a lot of other diners that are better that you can find for a classic diner experience, but if you want to have the experience that many Americans have or have had across this country, Denny's. Uh, SoCal Seth says, if you're in Hawaii, Koa Pancake House is better than Denny's. Koa Pancake House is amazing. Hawaii has amazing pancake places. They have these, like, fast food pancake places with like macadamia nut pancakes and I really love the breakfast culture in Hawaii. Uh, actually here in Southern California there's a chain called Stacks. It's a Hawaiian inspired pancake place and the pancake place in Hawaii what I like about them is that they're not sit down places that you have to wait forever and you just feel like your life is sapping away. Most pancake places in Hawaii actually you order at the counter so you can order quickly and they bring your food to your table. Uh, SPVRDX says Denny's is great as long as you order simple stuff. I agree. Their club sandwich is decent too but there's a lot of people that would say things like goddess that says I would rather get food at a gas station then go to Denny's. And Tony agrees with me that Denny's always has super slow service. But Tony, wouldn't you agree with me that super slow service is a classic American diner experience? Um, and uh, Drew says, I hope Shoney's is on the list. 
Unfortunately, it's not. Um, Brandon says, I almost always start my trips with Denny's before I leave town. Uh, Ricky says, Del Taco is a classic. Del Taco is a classic. It could probably be on this list, but it's not. Um, all right. And Brandon says, I've made him super hungry so far. That is excellent. Um, Kathy says, what's the name of the pancake place in Hawaii as we go there next year? Yeah, and it was mentioned before. It's like Koa. Koa Pancake House. K-O-A Pancake House. All right. Let's go on to the next number. This is number 14. Okay, this one's going to be interesting, too. Uh, number 14 is the Hometown Buffet. Why? Because buffets are classically the United States of America experience. We love all-you-can-eat and buffets in this country. Hometown Buffet is part of a larger chain that has uh, three other names. Hometown Buffet, Old Country Buffet, Country Buffet, and Ryan's Buffet. Hometown Buffet was founded in 1983. Today has 76 locations amongst all those chains that I mentioned. But in Hometown Buffet's heyday, they had 350 Old Country Buffets, 250 Hometown Buffets, and 350 Ryan's Buffets. If you do the math, there's almost a thousand buffet locations. The general premise of Hometown Buffet, you pay one price, you go in, and all you can eat, all you can gorge. They went from 950 locations down to 76 locations, and so I'll say go eat at Hometown Buffet because they're all out of business. There'll be a classic American experience that you won't have much longer. That's what the inside of a typical Hometown Buffet looks like. I used to really like Hometown Buffet. I really liked their chicken and dumplings. I really liked a lot of their items. I think it's another place that sort of slid downhill over the years. Um, but you go in this place and you'll pretty much feel like you're in a time warp. Um, Marcos says, hugs from Brazil. Thanks, Marcos. Uh, Melissa says, I miss Hometown Buffet. All the ones by me closed down. Yeah, it's unfortunate, Melissa. I think uh, they did good things. Tanner says, not a fan of the buffet. And I think that's why uh, a lot of these buffets closed down, is the attitudes in the U.S. moved away from let me gorge myself for as much as I can because maybe that's not healthy. and Maybe that's not good for me, right? Like, back in the day... You know, in the 70s and 80s, people didn't count calories, and they wanted as much food as they could. We were growing people. We were a working class. And, you know, today, since what most of us do is sit in front of a computer, Instagram, television, we can't really eat at the buffet because we're not burning 4,000 calories every day. But, you know, the one place where buffets really are still popular... And if you don't eat at Hometown Buffet, if you go to Las Vegas, eat at one of the hotel buffets. Eat at one of the better hotel buffets. Eat at the Aria. The Aria has a really good buffet in Las Vegas. Um, and uh, But I think Las Vegas is still one place, and like Indian casinos as well, Native American casinos, where people go and will gorge themselves because it's like a special occasion. Trisha says, I never heard of Hometown Buffet, but I did hear of Old Country, Old Country Buffet. Yeah, it was part of the chain, and the company that owns all of them was called, very creatively, Buffets Incorporated. All right, let's go on to number 15. Now, uh, I mentioned I think Hometown Buffet has gone into business because it's not healthy and all that stuff. Well, a healthy buffet chain is called Soup Plantation and Sweet Tomatoes. They got two names. It depends where they are. It was founded in 1979 in San Diego, California. They now have 104 locations. They are all company-owned. None of them are franchised. It's a buffet restaurant that specializes in soups and salads. That's the salad line as you go down. They all look clean. They all look bright. They're designed to be healthy, uh, and I think they're pretty good. So if you're hankering for kind of a more healthy buffet, check out Soup Plantation. All right, <clears throat> number 16, Orange Julius, classic American chain and Dairy Queen together for sweets. Uh, they're together. Orange Julius was founded in 1926 in Los Angeles, California, now with 5,700 locations. There's a lot of locations. They're often co-located co with Dairy Queen because Orange Julius is now owned by Dairy Queen. Orange Julius originally opened as an orange juice stand. That's what they sold. They sold orange juice. Um, but uh, the owner 
found that orange juice, because he owned a stand and he was drinking all the time, really bothered his stomach. 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 And so he developed this frothy mixture um, that's more frothy and creamy. It's a beverage mixture of ice, orange juice, sweetener, milk, powdered egg, and vanilla flavoring. If you've never had orange Julius before, you should give it a try. It is American classic. Um, <clears throat> and the modern equivalent of orange Julius is Jamba Juice, but it didn't make the list because it was founded in the 90s. Uh, all right. Somebody, uh, John Doe, asked me if I, if I can... If I can lick my elbow, you know, I don't, I don't think that's humanly possible. To, uh, uh, I can lick it like that. All right. Um, so enough for interesting questions like that. Let's go on to <clears throat> number 17. Speaking of dessert, Cinnabon. Really great cinnamon rolls, really great dessert. Uh, Cinnabon was founded in 1985 in SeaTac, Washington, which is basically outside of Seattle. It's where the Seattle's main airport is. Cinnabon now has 1,200 locations, and they've expanded a lot. They're actually in 48 countries. I included this one as classically American, because although they're in 48 countries, they don't have a lot of locations in those countries. Cinnabon is mostly found in shopping malls, gas stations, universities, rapid transit stations, casinos, and amusement parks. Their signature item is a cinnamon roll. They call it a Cinnabon. Uh, it's just really good. I don't think it's good for me, um, but it's really good. Like the cinnamon is just this creamy, delicious goodness. Their frosting's amazing. Much like Krispy Kreme, you have to eat them hot. Uh, Kevin King says, um, I just said the word Cinnabon and I got a cavity. Yeah, I believe it. Uh, Goddess says, I only see Cinnabon in airports and uh, Eduardo asks if I'm doing a top 100 list. This list is only 19. I've got two more to go. Uh, so we're going to get to it. Uh, and uh, so um, top 100. Boy, if I were to do a top 100, I would need more to drink than just this tea. I'd be going for hours on end. But I generally like to keep these to an hour or less. Because, boy, I mean, it, for those of you who have already spent an hour with me, it's amazing. Uh, and some of you said you're hungry, so that's awesome. <laughs> uh, Jenny Fed didn't like Orange Julius, uh, but Jenny Fed uh, does like Soup Plantation. Uh, all right. <clears throat> Let's go on to number 18. 18. Thrifty slash Rite Aid for ice cream. So Thrifty was this chain of drugstores here in the U.S. And they were famous for having a soda slash ice cream fountain in every location. Thrifty was purchased by a drugstore chain called Rite Aid, but they've continued to have their ice cream counters in their drugstores. Uh, and you can get really good ice cream for a dollar. That's what their ice cream cone looks like. Uh, and they always have this interestingly shaped scoop. It's like the cylinder shaped scoop. Uh, and they're known for their quirky flavors that include things like chocolate malted crunch, butter pecan, medieval madness, rocky road. I mean, where can you get like an ice cream cone for a dollar anymore? Uh, and Tony says, Thrifty's is very old school. It is. And you know, their ice cream counters aren't always staffed at the right age. There's not always someone behind it. But if you just go walk up to it, uh, you'll see it. Goddess says, we used to have Thrifty in California, but I don't see them anymore. Yeah, the sign outside the drugstore won't say Thrifty anymore. It'll say Rite Aid. But if it was a Thrifty's that's now Rite Aid, they will still have the ice cream counter inside. Um, SoCal Seth says, there's, there's still a pharmacy in Pasadena that has a soda fountain. And Kathy says, I thought Thrifty was a rental car company. Um, it is, too. Uh, and Jake McShane says he loves Thrifty ice cream. All right, uh, before I get to the last number, it is time to do the t-shirt giveaway. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask you the question like I always do. The correct answer to this question wins a yellow production t-shirt that I'll ship to you anywhere in the world. This question was about something I talked about before. So I'm gonna go look back in my notes and call out something I talked about before. My question to you, the first person to answer this question correctly wins a t-shirt. The question is what year 
was White Castle founded? What year was White Castle founded? First person to answer that question correctly gets a t-shirt. All right, and the last, the last one, number 19, classic American chain. No American chain list would be complete without Hooters. Hooters was founded in 1983 in Clearwater, Florida. Hooters now has 400 locations. Hooters, the name is a double entendre, famous for both its owl logo, you can see it right there, uh, a bird known for its hooting calls, and an American slang term. This American slang term was popularized by comedian Steve Martin on the TV show Saturday Night Live. Um, now, before I go on, I'm going to go to the comments because I just saw a ton of people mention dates, and I want to figure out who was the winner. Let's see. Uh, the winner is... The year is 1921, and the first person to say 1921... Jeff Webb! Jeff Webb, you are the winner! To claim your t-shirt, send me a message on Facebook... Uh, link to my Facebook page in the description below, or you can send me an email to chris at, ye at yellow.net with two W's. Chris at yellow.net with two W's. Let me know your address. Let me know what shirt size you want me to send you, and I will send it to you. Jeff Webb in the win, 1921. A number of you mentioned 1921 as well, but you are not as fast as Jeff Webb. Uh, all right, so <clears throat> some people said... I don't think of Hooters as classic American, but maybe it is. You know, let's see. Why is it so classically American? We'll talk about that in a moment. We'll talk about the menu for a moment. The menu specializes in uh, sandwiches, steaks, seafood, entrees, appetizers. But people really go to Hooters for the chicken wings and the beer. And, of course... The Hooters Girls. Hooters is probably more famous for the Hooters Girls than it is actually for the food. If you've never been to Hooters, Hooters is a just an interesting American experience that you won't get anywhere else, except maybe when there's a Hooters internationally. Um, but uh, Hooters is so American, right, that Hooters had its own magazine. Hooters had its own airline. Hooters has its own hotel. There are not a lot of other restaurant chains that have had an airline and a magazine and a hotel. They no longer have the magazine, they no longer have the airline, they still have the hotel. But that airline, uh, they had flight attendants and then they had Hooters girls that were on the flight basically just to entertain the passengers. Uh, and by the way, you've probably seen the Hooters girls before. Um, their uniform is a white tank top with the Hootie the Owl logo. You probably didn't know, but that's his name, Hootie the Owl. His logo's on there. The location name is on the front, and they're always paired with those pair of orange nylon runner shorts. Uh, and uh, SoCal Seth says, let's be honest, people don't go there for the food. Uh, and they have chicken wings, right? You can eat, and you drink beer. You know, it is definitely a place that's that experience, right? Um, so with that... We're at the end of time. We are in 902. The question at the end of this is always, what time is the next live stream? It will be in two weeks. Two weeks. Monday, April 1st. April Fool's Day at 8 p.m. No April Fool's, no foolin'. There actually will be a live stream. Then, what's the topic? I don't know yet. Follow me on Facebook for more updates, or you can always check out my community tab. I typically post a topic uh, about three days before, so you can be on the lookout for that. Uh, as usual, I won't say goodbye because I'll see you all in the next video.